we're going to be doing a beautiful colorist style soft uh, pastel artwork this morning which should be really zappy and fun and quirky now you do not need a zappy fun quirky picture to start you off with you do need a beautiful picture don't get me wrong but nothing with high intensity saturated colors we're going to be bringing those in all on our own I've grabbed this picture here from Pexels, which is royalty free. Gorgeous image of a lavender field, uh, probably in Spain, it looks like maybe. Yeah, it's called Carlos, so that would make sense, the, the photographer. Um, so first of all, I've got my reference image. I've also got some paper to work on, and for this, because I wanna really boost my colors, I'm going for a, a nice bright ready pink. I normally would go more of a red, but it was just the fact that this was all I could get my hands on in short notice. It's nothing splashy, this is just a piece of um, sugar paper. I would recommend before you start the picture to give it a spray of some hairspray or fixative to, to increase the tooth and give you a little bit more grip on your pigment. So do consider that as an option. Then I've got some pastels here, there and everywhere. I've got pastels over here. Uh, these are some unisons because they're unison they're incredibly powerful with the pigment and they'll be quite sappy and bright I've got some Conte pencils and some Dela pastel pencils as well there so there's a mixture there and over here I've got some Conte crowns sticks which are usually quite good for controlling and giving me a little bit more detail in my hand I have a charcoal pencil which is where I'm going to start off things so First of all, before we get started, we need to be aware of our aspect ratio for this picture and our piece of paper. And I've folded my piece of paper down, so I've got my bottom left hand corner. I've stuck that in the bottom left hand corner of my piece of paper. And then I've got a ruler to come up and where it hits the side of my paper, I know I need to cut off. So I've got a little bit more of a panoramic feel to my artwork. Then after doing that, I would highly recommend you take a moment out and you start thinking through what colours going where because we're going to be using colour theory in here and applying it. That should get very interesting. Now this is a lavender field so really I have to go with purple. There is no way around that. Um, I've got these lovely gorgeous shades of purple all going into my linear perspective so you can see that tailing off into the horizon which will really make it quite sappy as well visually. Um, as it's coming down, it looks like it's going in, it's gonna be going to a, a little bit more of a greeny blue and then a blue, okay? Now, as long as it's got a little bit of blue in it, remember that purple is made from red and blue, okay? You mix the two together to get purple. Then if I take that into a greeny shade where I've got a lot of blue in it, because that's got blue and that's got blue, they should look quite nicely together. And then as my green goes up into the hills of more purple, it kind of tails it in. Um, I will therefore have a bit of green in here, it's a little bit more zappy. Um, some greens, like here, it's a bit more intense than over here, it's a little bit more lighter. So I'm going to be playing around with my greens. Um, because I've got the green going up here and the green's got the blue in it and purple's got the blue in it, it should look quite nice. Um, I've got a little bit of a, a green tone up here, so you are already we're working a lot around blue mixes here, aren't we? You can see the harmonics where the, the colour is used to make multiple secondary shades and tertiary shades. Then we've got some dark green going up here. We've got some pale faded out washed out blue, which is going to be for those mountains or hills in the background. Now remember with aerial perspective or atmosphere, atmospheric perspective, if I can get my teeth in today, um, Blues will give you distance. So if you put a soft light blue down and make it a little bit fuzzy around the edge, it will make things look far away in your picture. That will therefore reflect to what I'm doing down here because what brings things closer to the viewer in atmospheric perspective is reds, reds and oranges. So I plan to put some yellow and orange down here and I'm doing that for a particular reason. I'm, I'm kind of keeping the orange for that aerial perspective to make things look close up, which is gonna be the red content in the orange. And I'm using the air, um, the aerial, the or, um, yellow, because the yellow is a complementary color to the purple. So by putting two complementary colors next to one another and yellow next to the purple, it will make the purple look brighter and more intense 
saturation. So we're gonna be playing more around with these brownie striped patches to make it look really funky. Then in the sky, I'm gonna come in with a little bit of a, a nice soft cerulean kind of blue in this sky. Again, remember I wanna fade it out in the distance, so I'm gonna soften it up and then increase the saturation around the closer sections of the viewer. It sounds so easy, I hear you all say. So, I guess let's get on with it. First of all, we need to get a drawing down. So, I was already looking at where my horizon line comes. I'm uh, marking it off on my picture. If I look here, so I would say about, yeah, that is halfway up the side of my picture. So it's slightly higher than halfway. So, let me fold this down because I've already double checked my aspect ratio. As you can see, I folded up, I've done my corner to corner, taken off the top of my paper to give my longer rectangle shape, which matches the same aspect ratio as the reference image. And now I've got to start looking at doing uh, my horizon line. So, horizon lines. First of all, let's find the halfway point upside. I need to go a little bit higher than I want because remember that horizon line is higher than the halfway. This. Then I'm going to sketch that horizon line in across my piece of paper. Holding the pencil towards the end. You could take a ruler if you wanted to and do a nice perfect line, but to be quite honest, I wouldn't be worried as long as it's not going downhill and sloping. You can get away with most ends. Once I've got that in, then I'm gonna start whacking in um, some of these stripes of lavender. So to do that, I'm gonna start by looking at how big the gaps are in relationship to one another and marking it on a piece of my paper. Oh, I reckon, yeah, I reckon it's like nearly double everything I've got. I'm looking at that gap there, and then I'm gonna be looking at that there because you can see that's much wider if you take that yeah you see that's slightly wider than that space so you're looking at one space in relationship to another if you look at that space in comparison to that space this one is slightly bigger than that so if I take my measurement by eye you can see that my lavender down here is slightly bigger and I'm just marking it off on the edge I'm doing mine by eye you can measure it if you you want to be that precise, but life's too short. <laughs> so I've got that down there, that round there. I need probably that for about there. And then I need to come down here, that kind of section. So I'm gonna then bring that down. So you can see that it's got a slight curve, swooshy. Then I can bring in my triangle perspective here on my first line, lambda. Then I've got to get this other line in here, which is kind of around there. And obviously the line on the left. Bring that in. Hopefully everyone can see that. Oh yeah, that's come out quite well. Once I've got that, then I've got my swoosh down. I need to do my swoosh up, because you can see if I up there. Right, let's swoosh that line in around, because it gets a little bit kind of thinner on my lambda field over there, and a little bit bigger over there. I'm guessing it's going downhill a bit. And then, obviously, You've got some of these lines <coughs> of lavender. Right. Let's start sketching those in as they go up here. Now, you can be so much more 
accurate than I am. I am literally doing this very simplistically. It's up to you if you want to go simple, you know, feel free. But, you know, if you want something really realistic, then you do need to pay price. Set up a good, accurate drawing and then start bringing in the colour theories that we're applying in a moment. Just like so. And we've got a tree here. Anyway, it's passing over, over there. Smaller bush thing to the right, and then I've got a bit of tree line going in over here. So I'm going to take that in just around there, my tree line, and we get some bushes around here. Super accurate, as you can tell. And a few bushes just plonked in there. That looks pretty good. Uh, I need to get that hill coming up, coming down. Kind of like that. Just freestyling this all the way. And you can see here I've got a fairly simplistic version, haven't I? Really, the drawing. But it's good enough to work out the next stage, which is going to be the colour. Yay! I hear you all shout. Okay, so I'm going to take that off there because I can see that all falling out. Put that on there. And my charcoal down here. And this is when we can start playing around with the colours. So I've got a mix of different pastels. Oh, I meant different brands, different pastels. And you'll find that usually the more money you pay for pastels, the softer and the brighter the colours are, but the more dust falls off. So you'll do this beautiful, big, bright coloured picture, then you tilt your picture and the dust falls off. That means you should be spraying and fixing through the process of doing the artwork, and I'd like you to do that today. This will then every time, well, it encapsulates the pigment onto the paper. You can use hairspray or fixative is completely up to you. Always be in a well ventilated room because that stuff is not great for you to be breathing in. So, we're gonna stop, start with some really nice zappy bright colors and I've got some unison to do that. Then I'm gonna be moving on and I've got some Conte sticks over here to do that. And then I will tidy up with my um, pastel pencils over there, just as like that to tidy it even further and make it look hyper realistic. Well. Not hyper realistic but pretty realistic so you can tell it's lavender fields now this means that i do need my color plan bum, bum, bum. here it is i sat there carefully working this out as you can tell my my delicate little arrows coming in now i um will therefore use this as a reference as i'm working through the picture and i highly recommend that you take a print out of your picture that you want to do sit down and think about the colors you want the main aim of this type of drawing is that you have one strong colour, which I've got is purple, and then you use a complementary colour to that. Now the complementary colour to purple is yellow, so I'm going to be slapping it in down here, very precisely as you can hear by the word slapping it, um, and then building it up. I'm also using harmonics, which are when one colour is made from like the next colour sitting next to it on the colour wheel, and you can see a transition. because. Um, that will work visually really well as well. You can be intense in your colours, but apply those two theories and you'll get some really nice artworks. You'll see here. Now with the complementary colours, remember that you do have other options. So you could have other different pictures. Um, green, the complementary colour, and red, and then blue, the complementary colour is orange. So you should be looking at using one of those kind of colour combinations within your artwork, then bringing in a few harmonics. Right, so here we go. Because it's soft pastels, I'm going to work down from the top and bring it down because I don't want to lean in it. It's not the greatest, especially with these bright colours. Therefore, I've got to work on this sky and work down. 
if you're working at home, obviously you don't have the same problem because you can twizzle your board around and not have to worry about it being upside down to a camera. So, some of you are so lucky. I'm gonna, first of all, make this guy a little bit faint. I'm taking a, a little bit of a wipe and I'm holding it on its side so I'm not flooding the paper with a huge amount of pigment. It's kind of just a nice soft misting. I'm focusing that around the center of the sky. And I'm gonna make the edges more intense because the edges are getting closer to the viewer. So if I don't put the white down there, they'll become more intense with pigment. Once I put my white down, I'm gonna use some of my blue. Okay. Uh, which I really don't want the label on, it's a bit of a pain, but hey, I'm gonna to have to tilt it. I'm gonna put in my blue like so. Um, I'm using this red paper to work on top of. That means that it's gonna affect my colors because the light's gonna be traveling through the layers of pigment, hitting that red paper, and being bounced back to the human eye. Therefore, you might find that if you're using a color that you rather like normally, and then you put on top of here and you think, hang on, what is going on? It's because of the color combination. Okay. Work in slowly and gently. White's really good at mixing the colours as well as softening and lightening it. A great pastel to have. It's worthy of always having a few backups. Now, I'm not going to overwork this because I want something like that pink to come through to make this picture quite sharp with the colour change. It will exaggerate it. Obviously, to do, I put that. I'm going to knock it over. The soft mountain in the background. Right, so I'm going to grab my blue that I picked up for this. And okay, I know you're going to be thinking straight away, "Whoa, Kim, that is sharp blue." You know, if you want a little bit of a faded out distance, that sure is not a way of doing it. Well, it is <clears throat> because once you put the blue in, then you can work that white in and soften it out, like so. Now, I'm on that a little bit sharper on the edge. So I'm gonna take my blue, what I've got here, and because it's a Conto stick, they're a little bit harder, means that you can get a crisper edge line. But it's really good at mixing in with all that soft unison. Uh, Amelia, that's a nice one to look at using as a brand or Rembrandt. It's another good brand of pastel. With soft pastels, you know, you kind of like get what you pay for. Definitely one to be looking out for in the sales. I'm bring in my heels down here. I'm just using that because it's easy to control. A stick. Okay, then we've got to come up, we've got some dark green, so let's throw in a bit of dark green and I don't really have it in the unison so I'm going to use it in the 
stick for those trees. Can you see that tree line? Lovely. Look at that, that's a good match. So I'm going to go in there. That nice lime, kind of minty green. Drifting up here. That smooths into the yellow. Can you see that yellow on the fields to the right? I put a little bit of yellow in. Remember that yellow makes green. So it's going to look really nice. Then you see I've got to grab that darker green stick again and bring in my tree silhouettes sitting up here. Okay, not perfect, but we're just kind of Smashing things in at this stage, don't worry too much. I'll put in my trees and my bushes that are down here in this field as well. Let's bring that in. Like so. Okay, and now we're going to start. Oh, we're getting closer to the lavender, it's coming up. I'm going to whack in the lightest tones and white light to dark. You can see these light tones. Look a little bit more like a green tone, so I'm going to start plotting those in. <coughs> oh, I don't know, this is um, dinner, and now I'm choking to death. Now at this stage it's probably really good to spray your artwork. I'll do mine in a minute. And it will probably mean that your sky just deadens down a bit, but don't worry because we're going to be working through it. Now if you're finding that you aren't getting a huge amount of dust come off, don't worry, you don't need to spray it. The spraying is all about you know how much of a tooth the paper has. So, I'm just going to quickly spray this and we'll be back with the next stage. Okay, I'm going to lighten up these now. I'm going to have to probably use a conte to make it a little bit smaller, easier to handle for that detail. I'm putting in a few light highlights into my greens. Just to exaggerate it. I think I should have put another green in there. Just knock that one in. Okay. Little bit of this. Okay. Now I'm going to start working in those hills. So, what is the plan? She says the plan is obviously to have a little bit more of a purpley tone. So I've got a purpley tone. These stronger ones in the distance. You might find that you wanted to, um, so I'm concentrating here, completely go off. You want to sharpen to a point your pastel because it can be quite big and clumsy and hard to control. Or if you don't mind that, don't worry, go along with it. Purple. Then it's going to go into my kind of bluey, grainy 
turquoisey tone of purple. Um, which I can't really find. I don't know if I have one. No, it doesn't look like it. So I'm going to end up putting down a blue and then I'll put a little bit of purple over the top of that. Remember this is colourless so it's not going to be really realistic, it's going to be quite bright and sappy. Don't over mix your colours on the surface. If you over mix them they can get mucky. Now I'm going to come back and do this section down here. And before I do it I'm just going to come back here and darken that. Um, and I'm thinking, what shall I use to darken it? I don't know if my pencil is going to be slightly darker. No, it's not. But I'm going to come in with a black charcoal pencil to darken out some of that detail. And then that should give it a little bit more fine Actually, I'm going to have to use a black because it's not coming off. Black is a really powerful colour. You'll find that if you put black next to another colour, it will make it look sharper and brighter. So do be aware that there will be serious colour consequences if you overdo the black. I come in here and just put some more green in there. Add it up because I'm a little bit messy. I was knocking it in so quick. Now we're getting to the really interesting part, which is the purple fields down here. So with this, what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to first of all be very careful because this could have a recipe of disaster if I do it too much. Like I said, too many colours will make it messy. And secondly, I need to give that zappiness of colour shades. So I'm going to go in with my light green and I'm going to work, I'm right handed, so I'm going to work on the left over towards the right. That means I'm not putting my wrist on it. Um, like I said, do be aware of which hand you do prefer to work in and plan out the direction of your work. So with this, I am just putting in some green over here for my lavender plants. As you can see, the leaves coming through. And these marks are little dots in the horizon and more of a line of rhythm, well, um, more like rhythmic lines as you come down towards the viewer. So I've done one bit, so if I put that in, I'm going to put in a little bit of a stronger darker green on the edge. Just gentle, kind of, it reminds me of the ticks, the tail of a tick when you, you know, you tick work, and that kind of mark. start bringing in a little bit of white to exaggerate the distance. If I put in a little bit of the white, then I'm going to be putting the purple on top. I know that the white will mix with the purple and it will look much more faded out. It's looking very fine goth. It's because it's got a rhythmic kind of mark. So I've got that and I need this to kind of come close. You can see how close that gets. Let's bring this in closer. Okay. And then we've got to start doing this ready brown. So I'm going to go mad and go in for a quite a, a ready shade down here. Now remember that red makes purple. So again, we're using that harmonics. I mix in a little bit of yellow in the sunlight. You should get a slight wash over the yellow and the red to create an orange, like so. Now I'm going to just go in there with a little bit more of a zappy green because that looks more like it needs a bit more of a zappy green to my liking. If you're gonna go, you might as well go full in. All right. um, and I'm gonna look back here, and I can see that this needs to be a little bit stronger blue. I'm gonna just add in a little bit more blue. Okay. 
Okay, so you can see we've got one bit already done, really. Um, you can lighten it up, because you can see here it's a little bit more kind of light in the picture. But you know, it's up to you where you want to bring your, your tones in, generate atmosphere. And then I've got to start on this one. So it's going to be like the same kind of thing. Just going in with my purple. It's quite deep down here. So that shadow of the purple all the way down, really exaggerating the perspective. as well because you can see here there's a few different greens starting to come through due to the direction of the light. Some are a little bit softer and lighter and some near the shade are a bit more intense and green. Then I'm on my sticks so it's back to the tiny little marks. Should end up something that looks like that. It's always gone to plan. It should be bright, it should be fun, it should be lively marks. You can see the rhythm of the marks and trying to capture it really fast, not being too fiddly. You could, if you wanted to, do it in pastel pencils here and there. It depends on how much pastel you've put down. If you've put down a lot of soft pastels, it's very hard to get a pastel pencil to go in and give you the definition and the detail. So do keep that in mind. But, you know, it depends on what you want. The sticks will give you stronger, brighter colours than the pastel pencils, but the pastel pencils will give you more accurate detail. So it's a little bit of a trade-off. I hope you've enjoyed it and that you've got something that looks funky and bright, as you can see like mine. And I'll see you all next time. Have a lovely Christmas, everyone. Bye.